Hi guys. I listen back to my own videos and I think, my goodness, unless you're really tuned in with me and you've been with me listening to these stories, it's really hard to understand. But I know what's important is listening to the frequency because it's rewiring your mind. It's renewing your mind. And so it, though it sounds like parables, we are actually teaching ourselves a new path in the mind, in our circuitry. So it's so important to listen to it, come back the next day or whenever I post again, and then listen to the summation of it. Because even me, as I'm going through it, it's teaching me. It's, it's a translation because I receive the download, you guys, and I receive it in a whirlwind. It is mixed and what I'm doing is pulling out the elements and trying to place them in some kind of order for you. The first attempt seems to teach me. And then it's like I come back and I it takes a few days to settle in. Okay. So let me point out for you again what I've got going on. Okay. October 2nd, we had an X-Class solar flare. We walked through, as far as we know, right with the world to November 11th. November 11th is where I feel we had a division and we started to look back and review these events from October 2nd to November 11th in order to find out what was going to happen December 21st. We are saying that October 2nd had an X-class solar flare. I see that December 21st has possibly the date of our solar flare, the solar flare, the big solar flare, which we just called in the last video, the last trumpet. Okay. So I see that as December 21st. But guys, when we get to December 21st, we, God wakes up. It's the solar flash that wakes up the sun in you. Okay. And we hit stop, pause, wait a minute. If we don't get other people on board, the whole world is destroyed. Okay. We realize that. So we stop time, hit the pause buzzin, button, and we rewind the clock as our new God selves, and we come back right here, which is November 30th, December 1st. All approximations. What I'm saying is that I see us rewind in a time loop, just like Mercury's retrograde, a three week period. So from December 21st, we go back November 30th, December 1st. Now, luckily we've already been told what happens during a retrograde period, you guys. It's the shadow, the shadow, the shadow, which meant what it meant for us is that our essence, our true being, there's no better word than essence. The essential part of us is separated from the shadow figure, which is the carnal body. Okay. So if we make it to December 21st and then come back to, let's call it December 1st, what about the December 1st that has not yet reached December 21st and is still walking toward it, going back in time? This is the time travelers that we have seen. And I feel like December 1st-ish is Jesus returning with his saints. 
okay? So that in that period then, we are going to see things and think, what the heck was that? And who is that? And what is that? And I, I see miracles and I see, this is actually what I see. Because we, at December 21st, we already ascended and then hit the pause button. We already went through the tunnel and we gained all of our tools, remember? All of the tools that um, Galactic Mother was teaching us how to wield, okay? So that when we come back is actually this big battle of Armageddon because we don't have swords of truth for no reason, okay? We will be battling, but of course we work for the Prince of Peace. And so there's never any bloodshed or anything like that. It's just fighting the battle of Armageddon. And of course the battle's already won. Okay. So that the shadow figures, um, the evil, now I'm talking about the dark ones and the evil ones and all that language that the Bible uses they will be, the spirit says decimate. Which means 10, which is, it's calling me to the word December, decimate December 10. Okay. Um, Decimate, decimate the evil ones. The blood, again, that would be evil ones, you guys, sinks to the bottom and the plasma, the star beings rise to the top. I am seeing them marching and they're marching on, I want to call it the holy city. Who's marching? Um, Jesus and his saints are marching on the holy city. And what about your physical body that's still here? What about the one that's on the timeline that hasn't gone back in time? I don't know. I don't know. What do we look like? What, what are we doing? Are we doing this? Are we still doing this? Wow, there's another version, the higher version that's already turned into God that comes back. And and how, how, how? Okay, that's why I say expect weird miracles, expect weird events, and expect things to look so different. And when... I first began to feel this time change. Um, again, like I said, it was around September 8th. Okay. You know what? The Spirit just said that's the end. On September 8th, we had the passing of Queen Elizabeth. So her symbolism, symbolism, I know nothing about her. She's a beautiful woman, as are all of you, men and women. Um, she represented the lower aspects of man, humans, okay? The lower aspects the angry, the, what we would call evil aspects of humanity. And so they're storming. The saints are storming 
her castle, her dominion, her rulership. That's what they're storming. Okay, to defeat the Antichrist. Okay, now, okay. So the spirit said, that's when the pole is really, really starting to shift. And that makes perfect sense. That's when the pole is really starting to go. Because in order to fully go, right, in order for this, so the pole shift and like the, um, Micronova are they're related. I mean, it's going to be one event, but our poles, as far as the earth is concerned, are still in this area, right? Of the earth, up and down, north and south poles. I see this really starting to change the poles here, meaning it's getting ready to hit the zero point. It's getting very close to the zero point. Okay, so it's at the zero point when everything happens, as we know from our picture. Okay, so the poles really begin to shift, meaning, guys, poles also mean the powers that be, the powers that be. That's what the pole means. That's what the pole shift means. Okay, positive and negative is what we mean. And who sits on the throne, says the spirit. Okay, so I hope that clarified a little bit. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Good morning, guys. I hope you don't mind that I left that first video attached because the spirit spoke to me in it. I thought it was important that I, that I let you guys see that one. Um, so, what we are talking about, you guys, is an approximation of the timeline of events that are occurring for the next month or two, okay? Um, what we have so far is that we have October 2nd, we walked forward until November 11th. November 11th, the timelines split. We can see the difference in the timelines here. And we're walking back to December 21st when everything is flourishing here, December 21st. And then December 21st, we rewind to December 1st, the middle of the eye. And again, those are all complete approximations by a week. Okay. We had events before October 2nd that are important, and we're going to have events after December 21st that are important, okay? So these are approximations completely. Okay, so in that time period, the rewind, it's a rewind. We are rewinding the clock. Once we hit December 21st, we rewind the clock. It's a time loop. It's a wormhole. And what it is, is the travail of birth. When you are going through the birth canal, it's the travail of birth. In this three-week period, starting November 29th, 30, December 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, in that time period, the travail begins. And what we're going to be discovering in this time period is the difference between a living soul and a quickening spirit, a living soul and a quickening spirit. So, Let's go back to the greatest story never told. 
We learned in that story that Adam took the forbidden fruit, which is the knowledge of the gods, says the Bible. The knowledge of the gods is the knowledge of the angels, the hosts of heaven, the stars of heaven. The knowledge of the stars is nuclear power. Okay, so Adam took the forbidden fruit. In one scenario, Adam was not prepared for that nuclear power and he took it, it happened, and he reverb that event reverberated its poison and its toxins through the time-space continuum back to the beginning of time. This is why back in the garden, we have the story of Adam, but this is why we've been cursed. Um, man is a wicked sinner. It's all that language in the Bible that tells us that something went wrong. Well, that was it. That was the event, and it shattered the time-space continuum back to the beginning. Another event that shattered the time-space continuum was Jesus coming on this earth, where the pole shifted, the axis of power shifted. It, it started out in the east, and it moved to the west, and Jesus changed the time, the calendar. We base our calendar from when Jesus came. Okay. But it was at the time that we took the nuclear apple that God said, you shall surely die. That's what he told Adam what would happen if he took that fruit. But Adam didn't die. God gave Adam a grace period. And instead, he cursed him and gave him skin. So we've been living uh, with a borrowed skin in a borrowed time with a borrowed breath of life. Borrowed. Borrowed. And all of it we took from the serpent. The serpent came in and gave us his skin. His, it's his poisonous skin. But when... Adam was created. God blew into his nostrils. You guys, that means anger. His soul was angry. It was red. It was a borrowed soul. It was the soul of the dead. So it was not at its full potential because we died and went to hell. Thank you, Paula. And we've been dead living in this existence, thinking that we are alive. Okay? So I, these are symbols, you guys, but it's a very true story. And so we've been living in this skin. We were supposed to be angels in the garden. They'd had no skin until they took of the fruit. And God clothed them with a coat of skin, says the Bible. Okay. Time was supposed to be up. So we've been living in borrowed time, okay, with a borrowed soul. It is at the December 1st, again, an approximation, that we will begin to see the difference between the living souls versus the quickening spirits. So last man, Adam, was a living soul. I'm sorry. First man, Adam. I am so sorry. First man, Adam, was a living soul. Last man, Adam, is a quickening spirit. The question becomes, who's making the transition? Who's doing the work to become a quickening spirit from the living soul? It's in this time period that that will be revealed. Okay, and it's because December 21st-ish, we go and we touch the finger of God. Do you remember, guys, um, Galactic Mother gave us a 
word where she said how she longs to embrace us. Okay. But she kind of gave the impression that we're not going to embrace yet, but she said, touch, we shall, we shall touch. So it's Adam and God touching fingers. That's what we do December 21st. Okay. At that moment, you guys, we, God wakes up in those of us who have been quickening our spirit and comes back to save us from the nuclear destruction that's impending. Okay. So, and nuclear, it means two different things. Nuclear in man's world means nuclear fission by a weapon. And in God's world, it means solar fusion by the morning star, which is the prize. The morning star is the prize. Jesus says, I will give to you the morning star. It's the prize of those who have become quickening spirits. Okay. So we rewind the clock in order to, um, help the world to see the difference. Okay. Between what is false and what is true. Okay. So you guys at December 21st, what we're doing is we are being called to judgment. The dead will be judged. It's, it's appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. Okay. So in resurrection speak, this is, um, the dead in Christ will rise first. Okay. Who's dead in Christ? It's those who took the forbidden fruit. They said, we want the knowledge. We want to know what God is. We want to be like God. We want to be like Christ. This is all told in the story of the tree of knowledge. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You shall be as gods who made a vow. I'm going to follow Jesus Christ. And then you were baptized into death. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay. Once again, it's that group of people that I see. Okay. So we rise first, you guys. Now this is hypothetically because we're going to rewind the time. Okay. And we get judged. The dead in Christ shall rise first to be judged. And it's at that time where we understand if we have made it or not. Okay. Then we rewind the time because we've just beat the time clock. God, when he gave us borrowed skin, borrowed soul and borrowed time, we beat the time clock. So now we can do what we, as we will with time, we choose to rewind it to help save others. Okay. In the rewinding of that, you guys, it's the time loop. Okay. It's our tunnel, but it's also our victory lap. It's a victory lap. The word triumph is the word touch. If you touch the finger of God, if you are able to pierce through the barrier because you have the sword of truth, you will touch the finger of God. Pierce through pierce beyond and touch the finger of God. Now, remember in the gospel of Luke, when they approach the tomb, they pierce beyond and they touch. Okay. They, it's still very confusing and perplexing guys. It's not going to look like what we think it looks like. Okay. It just, you just will feel it and know it in your soul. Okay. So Touch means triumph, you guys. 
Triumph is the trump. Triumph means trump. And what I see it as is God playing his trump card. Who's his trump card? It's the ones who have become quickening spirits. That's his trump card. Okay? That's what's going to help to save the world, save the others. This was his trick up his sleeve. It's the trick up his sleeve, Mercury. It's the trick up Mercury sleeve, you guys. And what is it? It is this shadow. It's the shadow. It's the spade. This is a spade, you guys. This is the trick up Mercury sleeve. Okay, that shadow behind. And what does sleeve mean, you guys? Something tubular, which is that birth canal, that time loop, the time warp, the wormhole, and the birth canal. Okay? So this is how we're starting back at December 1st-ish and continuing forward with the trump card. Now, now we're carrying the trump card. Okay. So what happens to the living souls during this three-week period is they start to disappear. And it's because they were living on borrowed energy the entire time. So how we saw this previously is that you unplug, thank you, Rachel, you unplug the video game and the virus, this is, for Christ's sake, thank you. This is the reboot. Do you remember? Galactic Mother told us, rewind, reboot, temporary reset. Okay? So what we're doing here is we're pulling the plug in order to reboot the system, and it gets the virus out. The virus is that evil. It's that anger that was breathed into the nostrils. It was the shadow figure. It was the demon. It was the antichrist. It was the living soul, but not quite alive, living with everything borrowed, borrowed energy, you guys, black holes. So they sucked the energy from the living, but they never really, truly had power, power in themselves. They were shadow figures in the game. They were viruses that were sent to tempt us and sent to sh show us the contrast between the living and the dead, between the good and the evil, between the light and the darkness. Okay. Okay. So all of this, I want to bring you to Matthew 24. And when you read it on the surface, it's complete fear. So stop, rewind your clock, and know that perfect love casts out any fear. The words on the page are black and white, good and evil. It's it's a lie. It's a literal that is not the true intention behind the words. These words are trying to portray to you something that the heart is speaking, that the spirit is speaking. And they were translated into words that gave you an incorrect idea of what's going on. Why is that? Because when we were living on borrowed time, we only had two. 
in our DNA. The messenger DNA was not woven in. The messenger is the one who translates correctly. And what does this mean? Triumph. Tri triumph. It's the trump card. It's the three being woven together. Okay. In truth, it's that messenger RNA that we've seen three strands, not just two. Okay. That's our triumph. That's our trump, trump card. That's where you're going to see it in this. It's that we're giving up our ghosts. What was our ghost? It was our borrowed soul. Soul means shell, guys. It's our borrowed soul. God said, you shall surely die. But instead, he decided to give us a grace period and made us these false images. All of us. Were we able to take that seed that was sown in corruption and raise it in incorruption, you guys? So what we're doing now is we are giving up the ghost like Jesus did, you guys. Our ghosts are coming out of us. Did you weave the three together into one unit? Did you take when Jesus came, he let that light, that photon of light, he let it in. Did you grab it and substantiate it and weave it together with your half of a soul? Only two thirds of a soul you had previously. Now you're going to have the full, the triumph. And that Christ light becomes you. Not some God out there, not some God that's coming to save you. You become the quickening spirit, the flesh that actually came alive, that flesh that actually became the word, the translator, the living word, the one who can speak the truth. Okay. Okay. So Matthew 24, we all know it, of course, because it's one of those fearful verses in the Bible. Um, ye shall hear. Okay. So Jesus answered and said, said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying, I am the Christ and shall deceive many. Here we go. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. You guys, because I've studied the language for so long, this word troubled is the same word as touch. So Jesus said to Laodicea, do not touch me. But the Luke in the gospel of Luke, when the women went to the tomb, they touched. Okay. This is the same word. And that touch is triumph and troubled. It's the same word. So be ye not troubled, alarmed, frightened, triumph, triambos in Greek. Okay. For all these things must come to pass, pass, but the end is not yet because we're talking about going back three weeks and getting into the birth canal into the time loop and into the wormhole. Okay. Circling back, you guys. Um, the end is not yet. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, diverse places. Happening all the time for the past 3,000 years. So don't even take heed to that verse. Okay. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Sorrows means a woman's travail. It's our canal. Now we're now entering the worm hole, the time loop, and the birth canal. 
Okay. At the root of these words is the word sink, where in the word touch, you guys, touch is this way. So it's in the birth canal where you're going to see our centrifuge, which is a whirlwind and a spinning. And some are going to sink, and that's because they have no substance. Their shadows and their ghosts did not marry together with their light. And so they are just figments of the imagination now, fading like Marty's siblings in the picture, fading away. Okay. They shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Erase the literal meaning. Let me tell you what it means underneath. It means martyr, which is one of our favorite words. Why is this? Okay. I'm going to give you the words. Okay. Martyr, tirade, volley, record, retire, witness, testimony, what this verse actually means is you have already been dead for Christ. You have already been dead. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Did you know that when you were baptized, you died? Okay. You are already dead. What happens here is the ripeness. These are the words, you guys. The ripeness presents itself. The fruit presents itself as being ripe. This is what martyr means. Okay. What this whirlwind is doing is causing to come forth. The spirit's rise and come to the top, you guys. Is your fruit ripe? Or is your fruit, the Bible calls it evil. Is your fruit bad, darkness, shadow, and shade? Then it sinks. Okay. What's going on here, you guys, is is the dead are being judged, judged. God judges nobody. It's your own heart. It's your own heart. It's by your own heart that you will be convicted or set free. It's by the love in your heart. Okay. Okay. This also underneath here, you guys, is to hand out lots do you guys understand? It's going through the tunnel and getting your lot. What's your treasure chest hold? What does your chest hold? Is it an empty tomb, a whitewashed sepulcher? Or have you stored your treasures away for this very day in your chest, in your heart? Because I, like I told you yesterday or the day before, this is going through the heart of God to see what is in the heart, you guys. Okay. It also means to an office, appointed to an office. This is the elect and this is the chosen. So we are coming up out of the free will universe. What did you choose? Which one did you choose? Did you choose to be elected? Okay. That's the quickening spirits. The living souls chose the other way to be figments and shades and shadows in the game. Energy suckers, 
black holes. They choose to remain in that black hole. And when the power cord is pulled, they can't suck our energy anymore. They will literally, the virus disappears from the hard drive, from the program. Okay. Okay, so that was verse 9. That's all it means. Never look at the literal meaning again with fear. This is all written in love. The intention behind this book was love. Okay, Matthew 24, 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Offended and hate and all of that. What does it mean? Of course, it means to trip and fall. It's tripping the wire. Falling. It literally says to cause to fall away apostasy. Apostasy. Betray. Yield up. Give up the ghost. Give up the shadow. I see so many being healed. So, so many being healed. Okay. Um, you guys, there's something here in this time loop and time period that is Mercury's shadow. When he goes into retrograde, he doesn't actually... Um, go into retrograde. So let's continue though with the verses. Okay. Um, so Matthew 24, 11, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound and the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Okay. We are talking about this three week period. Okay. What those verses mean is false prophets means wicked. False, deceitful, wax cold. Wax cold. Inanimate breeze. It was never animated, you guys for so many months, Galactic Mother was giving us animation. She was animating us, bringing us to life. The inanimate breeze, it's the word psyche in Greek, and you know what that is. It's the wind, it's the spirit. It was inanimate. Okay, meaning it stayed the living soul, but the soul is just a shell of a being. There's no substance inside. Okay, the other ones, quickening literally means animation. To quicken means to animate. A quickening spirit on the other side, you guys. <clears throat> reduction in temperature by evapor evaporation, causing them to sink. Evaporation is the ghost going up and that cools them. So the lower air, the lower spirits sink, you guys. This, I, I'm going to say it now because it's probably going to be important. This is the God of wine and it's Bacchus or Dionysus. So, it's the God of wine. Is your wine flat? Is it turned sour? Is it vinegar? Or did you add the bubbly? Champagne, the new wine in the kingdom. What's wine? You guys, wine is spirits. It's alcohol. It's liquor. It's spirits. This is the God of Bacchus and Dionysus. <clears throat> okay, so... <clears throat> 
Let's continue. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, and then the wonderful verse here that everybody... The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Yes, and I see that because this is our victory lap. This is where we start to show who's our mother. We start to shine. We start with that animation, okay? And the gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come, okay? That's what's going on in this three-day period for the ones that are animated, the ones that touch, touch we shall, she said, okay? Um, and then Matthew 24, 15, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, he, he already talked about the end. He is going back to review what he just said. When you see the abomination of desolation. So on the other hand, not the animated quickened spirits, but on the other hand, the abomination of desolation, the only the living soul, borrowed time, borrowed skin, and borrowed, what was the other one? Okay. Abomination, stink, putrid, rotten fruit, no substance, stink. It was the dark cloud rising, an incense of burning flesh, burning animals. That's the dark fumes rising, okay? On the other side, you guys, we had the beautiful aroma of the frankincense was the white plume rising, okay? Those are our spirits, and that's how they smell. One stinks because it's putrid. It waxed old. And the other's a beautiful aroma. Okay? Um, that was in the abomination. And then desolation means to strip of treasures. To strip of treasures. Okay. So, judgment of the dead. The dead in Christ shall rise first for their judgment. You guys, we've known this. We have to do it, in, like I just said, we have to do it in the spirit first to train our minds to bring it into manifestation. This is how God works, okay? The computer works is what the spirit wants to say. This is how the computer works. Okay, judgment of the dead, our souls are being judged, giving up our ghosts, our borrowed breath. Our borrowed breath. We're giving it up. What did you do with this time period? With your grace period, what did you do with it? Those will come forward. Some will come forward with light, love, hope, wisdom, glory, shine. There are others who will come forward with doom, fear, evil, rotten. This is our sign. This is the wicked being revealed. And I do, I, I, we, it's so clear, right? Cause some look like this evil, doom, fear, horrors coming. Right. And others are like, what are you talking about? I see the light of day. I see the birth of God. I see a brilliant dawn on the horizon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where does Mercury go in that time loop, right? You guys, because he doesn't actually go backwards and retrograde. And it's like he retraces his steps. He's retracing his steps. Hello. That's Marty in Back to the Future looking at himself from afar, retracing those steps. Mercury retrograde, it's shadow period, it's, it will, we'll put our finger on it, hopefully, okay? Retrace, you guys, means to retract, retreat, withdraw. 
What is all of that language? It's the same language as martyr. Martyr, tirade, retire, volley, record, witness, testimony. It's, it's that word that we love so much on this channel. Okay, withdraw. What? Withdraw from the bank, from your treasure chest. Retracing your steps, okay? It's our victory lap, triumph, trump card. Mercury has been hiding something up his sleeve, which is something tubular. Okay, the word sleeve means apron, and the word apron means napkin. And the napkin is what we find in the tomb. There's the linen, and then there's the napkin. You guys, the napkin literally was Jesus's face wrap, his face wrap. So, sleeve, apron, napkin, the countenance changes. The count changes. Time, change, count, moment, faces. The face covering changes. Okay? It's like God reveals himself. And or the other God reveals himself, which is completely false. He doesn't even exist. Jesus already killed the devil by his death. That devil doesn't even exist. Okay? Okay, you guys, I know it's long. I hope you made it with me to the end. I will see you in the next video.